Hey, Stives here with Beard Logic, and this is episode 6 in the series where we build an adventure game. In the last couple episodes, we were working on animations, so I think we're going to change it up a bit for this episode. Let's get a simple camera up and going. The first thing I'm going to do is change our character back into a capsule so that we can work on movement. As I've said before in previous episodes, we want our animations to be driven by the movement and not the other way around, and that's why we're doing this. So let's add a new script, and I'm going to call it AG Camera Controller. This script will be sitting on the camera, and it'll control where the camera goes in relation to its target. Just a personal preference when dealing with cameras in Unity, I like to be able to move the camera around in Unity and start it up and have it in the same place. So that's how I'm going to design this script. So there's a couple things we're going to need to get this started. We're going to need a target so the camera has something to look at. We're also going to store the distance the camera is from the player and the offset that the camera has relative to the player as well. And as I said before, I want the camera to remain in the same location when we start, and so that's what we're going to do in the awake function. We're going to find the difference between the target and the camera, and we're going to store the direction in the camera offset and the distance in the distance to player. Really, I should probably have called the camera offset something like camera direction, but what are you going to do? And now that we have those values, we can update the camera's position every frame in the update function. It might actually be worth changing this to the fixed update function, although I didn't notice any glitches. There might be some because the player is actually updating in the fixed update function. So all we're really doing is using that offset for the camera that we just got, and we're recalculating the position of the camera uh, from the perspective of the target. And then we'll just use uh, transform.lookat to make sure the camera is always looking at the target. And there you have it, a simple camera script. That's all for now. Oh, okay, no, I'm just kidding. This script will actually do something though, so we're, we will test it out. Uh, first off, we're going to add it to the camera, and then we're going to add the... Um, well, we could just add the character as the target, but I think what we want to do is add a child object to the character and use that as the target instead. That'll allow us to control more precisely where the camera is looking with respect to the character. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. I could make this a little more general because uh, you don't really want to have your... Uh, camera hard-coded into the target of your character, but for now I think that's going to be fine. So let's just try this out. And as you can see, the camera is now following the character along. The one thing I would change is the height of the target, because we probably want it to be at the character's head and not at the feet. That feels more natural to me. And before we do anything else, let's just stop this and set that value in the prefabs. And then we can head back and try and get the rotation to work on the camera. I have no intention for this camera to be super polished. It really just needs to be functional for now. But you would probably do some of this uh, rotation that I'm about to do a little bit differently if you were to be doing it for a final version. We're going to add our rotation code in another function. So let's just make a call to that function in update so that we can go work on it there. We're going to be rotating the camera using a simple click and drag method. And it's just going to watch the right mouse button. We're going to need to store a few variables to do this. Uh, specifically, when you press the mouse button down, we need to know a number of things. The most important is probably the position of the mouse on mouse down. But we're also going to want to store the camera offset when we press the mouse button down, because we're going to be using that to rotate. And probably also what the camera's right vector was, so that we can keep the pitch rotation there in mind as well. And then, when the mouse button gets pressed, we're going to populate these variables with the corresponding camera values. Ah, and now there's one more variable I forgot. We need to know what the pitch of the camera was before we started as well. This is going to be stored as an angle that's calculated with respect to the ground. I didn't catch this while I was doing it, but I was using the camera offset as a reference point for the plane, which kind of works because that's a really small value generally, but it's definitely not correct. So I have a correction on screen for that. All right, so now that we have our values stored, we can look at moving the camera by dragging the mouse. So the next if statement is going to look very similar to the first one, but it is different. The difference being that we want this function called every frame that the mouse button is held down. All right, so now to calculate the rotation. First, we need to know the difference between where the mouse was and where it is now. And something we should probably add as well is a rotation speed. So let's do that really quickly too. 
Then we'll use that value to calculate the rotation both on the x-axis and the y-axis. So the basic idea is to calculate the circumference that you should be traversing based on the distance you are from the um, target. Picture a ball with a radius of the distance of the camera to the target and your mouse is hovering along the surface of that ball. And then we'll just calculate the pitch in a very similar way. In this case we're definitely going to have to negate the pitch so just be wary of that. So then we're going to use some quaternions. Don't be too afraid. This is a pretty simple calculation we're doing. To calculate the proper rotation, we're just going to create two different ones, one for each uh, rotation that we just figured out, and then simply multiply them together. And then we're just going to take the drag offset we had at the start, multiply it by our rotation, and apply it to our current offset. That probably sounded a little more complicated than it actually is, but I'm having trouble explaining it any simpler than that. So just have a look at the screen and you'll see that the code is fairly straightforward. Alright, let's give this a try and see what we get. And we can drag around OK. I think we're going to increase the drag speed and we are clipping through the bottom of the map and there's some issues at the top so what we're going to do is add some clamps to the pitch value to prevent it from uh, going too far up or down. But first I think we're going to change the drag speed to something like 5 or maybe even 10. So let's add another variable for our pitch clamp because we want to be able to clamp it between two different values. We're going to use a vector 2 and the x value is going to be our minimum and the y value will be our maximum. Now unfortunately because we want the uh, difference in pitch and not the actual absolute pitch value, uh, we're not going to be able to use a single clamp function for this. So instead we're going to look at where we started and what has currently been added and check to see if that value has exceeded one of the thresholds of the clamp. And because of that we're also not going to be able to set the pitch value to the clamp values. We're going to have to use the difference between the clamp value and the initial start value. So we end up with something that looks like this. It's not exactly elegant but we're just trying to make it work. If you have any questions on this or anything else you've seen in the episode, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Alright, let's see what we got. Well, that's looking better now. We can't move the mouse up or down too far, uh, but I think we're going to increase the clamp a bit. I think we're going to go from 0 to maybe even 90. Though we'll probably have to do something like 89.9 .9 because generally speaking going up as high as 90 will cause issues. Yeah, it definitely still flips uh, when you're at 90, so we do need to lower it a bit. So now maybe we can try moving around. Now, because we haven't wired the camera into our movement scheme yet, we're definitely not going to be going in the direction that we expect to be going. So if we head back into code, go to the player controller class, and we're going to change the movement scheme there a bit. So I think all we're going to do is take the input and run it through the camera's transform so that we're going roughly the right direction. Uh, I'll try and explain it a little better than that as we go along here. Uh, Unity's got these functions that will take a vector and use the transform of another object to modify it. So what we're going to do is assume that the input is already in camera space and then we're going to convert it into world space from there. Uh, I don't really want to modify this input value, so I think we're going to add another variable called direction and use that instead. And then we just need to make sure wherever input was being used that we use direction uh, instead. And we're going to set the direction's y value to zero because once we pass it through the camera's transform, we'll definitely have some y value we don't need uh, because the camera is almost certainly pointing downward. And then we just normalize it and we're ready to go. And now when you press forward, you'll go the direction the camera is facing. So that, I think, is that. Please consider liking, subscribing, and or sharing this video because it lets me know you're interested in this content and I will make more of it. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see otherwise, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Bye for now.